I moved to this quiet suburban neighborhood a few months ago. The move was supposed to be a fresh start. I work as a freelance writer, which means I spend most of my days at home, typing away on my laptop, staring out of the window at the small garden I've tried to keep alive. It's a simple life, but it's one I was looking forward to when I left the chaos of city living. The house I rented is small but cosy. It has a front yard with a few flower beds and a backyard with a high wooden fence that separates me from the neighbors. I didn't know anyone in the area when I moved in and I haven't made much of an effort to get to know anyone since. I see my neighbors sometimes when I go out for my evening walks. There's a couple living behind my house. I've seen them a few times, mostly when they're working in their garden or coming back from grocery shopping. We've exchanged polite waves, but never had a conversation. My days have settled into a routine. I wake up, make coffee and sit down at my desk. I write for a few hours, take a break to eat lunch, then go back to writing until the late afternoon. In the evenings, I usually go for a walk around the neighborhood. It's a quiet area and I enjoy the peace. Sometimes I see other people walking their dogs or pushing strollers. There's a park nearby with a small pond and I like to sit there and watch the ducks. It's a simple routine, but it keeps me focused. A few days ago, something changed. It started when I found a cat on my front porch. It was early in the morning and I was just stepping out to get the newspaper. The cat was sitting there, staring at me. It had blood on its fur. I was startled and took a step back. The cat didn't move. It just sat there, looking at me with its green eyes. I'm not much of a cat person. I've never owned a pet, and I don't know much about animals. This cat looked like it had been in a fight. Its fur was matted and dirty, and the blood on its coat looked fresh. I glanced around to see if anyone else was nearby, but the street was empty. It was too early for most people to be out. I didn't know what to do, so I ignored it. I walked past the cat, picked up the newspaper, and went back inside. When I looked out of the window a few minutes later, the cat was gone. I tried to put it out of my mind and focus on my work, but I kept thinking about the blood on its fur. I wondered if it was hurt or if it had gotten into a fight with another animal. The next day the cat was back. It was sitting in the same spot on my front porch and it still had blood on its fur. This time I tried to shoo it away. I opened the door and clapped my hands, hoping it would run off, but it didn't budge. It just looked at me, blinking slowly. I felt a shiver run down my spine, but I pushed the feeling away. It was just a cat, probably someone's pet that had gotten into trouble. I closed the door and went back to my desk. Throughout the day, I kept glancing at the window, half expecting to see the cat still sitting there. By the afternoon, it was gone again. I told myself not to worry about it. Cats roam around all the time. It was probably just passing through. But the next morning it was back. Same spot, same blood on its fur. This time, I noticed something else. There were small, dark stains on my porch where the cat had been sitting. Blood stains. I stared at them, feeling a growing sense of unease. I didn't like this. I didn't like the way the cat just sat there staring at me, and I didn't like the blood on its fur or the stains on my porch. I thought about calling someone, maybe animal control or a neighbor, but I didn't know what to say. There's a cat sitting on my porch with blood on its fur. It didn't seem like something that would warrant a call for help. Instead, I decided to wait and see what happened. If the cat kept coming back, I'd figure out what to do then. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about the cat, about the blood, about the stains on my porch. I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, listening to the silence of the house. I told myself I was being ridiculous. It was just a cat. There was nothing to worry about. Eventually, I fell into a restless sleep, my dreams filled with images of green eyes and dark red stains. The next morning, I woke up feeling groggy. 
My dreams had been restless, filled with flashes of the cat, blood and dark shadows that I couldn't quite make out. I pushed the thoughts aside, got out of bed and went through my usual morning routine. I made coffee, sat at my desk and tried to focus on my work. It wasn't easy. My mind kept drifting back to the cat. By mid-morning, I couldn't take it anymore. I stood up and went to the front door, hoping the cat had finally moved on. I opened the door slowly, holding my breath. There it was, sitting in the same spot on the porch. Blood still matted its fur, and it stared at me as if it had been waiting. I felt a surge of irritation. This was my house, my space. Why wouldn't the cat leave me alone? I decided to follow it, see where it went, and maybe I could find out who owned it. I put on my shoes and stepped outside. The cat didn't move as I approached. I stood there for a moment, unsure of what to do. Then I started walking down the path to the sidewalk, glancing back to see if the cat would follow. To my surprise, it got up and padded along behind me. I walked slowly, letting it lead the way. We moved down the street past a row of houses with neat lawns and flower beds. The neighborhood was quiet, the only sound the crunch of gravel under my feet. I felt a bit silly, like I was playing some strange game of follow the leader with a blood-covered cat, but I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something I needed to understand, something I needed to see. The cat led me around the block and then turned into a narrow alley that ran behind the row of houses. I hesitated for a moment, then followed. The alley was shaded, lined with tall wooden fences and the backs of garages. I'd never been back here before. It felt isolated, cut off from the rest of the neighborhood. The cat walked with purpose, tail up, as if it knew exactly where it was going. After a few minutes, it stopped in front of a gate in one of the fences. The house beyond the gate was familiar. It was the one directly behind mine, the one with the couple I'd seen a few times, but never spoken to. The cat slipped through a gap in the gate and disappeared into the backyard. I stood there, looking at the house. The curtains were drawn, and there were no signs of life. I pushed the gate open and stepped into the yard. It felt like I was crossing some invisible boundary, moving from my safe, predictable world into something unknown. The backyard was overgrown, the grass long and unkempt. Weeds had taken over what looked like a vegetable garden. The cat had already moved to the back door. It nudged a small cat door with its nose and slipped inside. I walked up to the door and hesitated. It was quiet. Too quiet. I couldn't hear anything from inside the house, no voices, no sound of a TV or radio. My heart was pounding, but I didn't know why. I reached for the door handle and tried it. To my surprise, it turned easily. The door was unlocked. I pushed it open and stepped inside. The air was stale, filled with a faint, sour smell. I was in the kitchen. Dishes were piled in the sink, and the counters were cluttered with empty food containers. I walked through the kitchen into the hallway, calling out, Hello, is anyone home? There was no answer. I moved slowly, taking in my surroundings. The house felt abandoned, as if no one had been there for days. Dust had settled on the furniture, and the air was thick, smelling of death and rot. I made my way to the living room, pinching my nose closed to where the curtains were drawn, casting the room in shadows. The cat was sitting in the middle of the floor, staring at a spot near the couch. As my eyes adjusted to the dim light, I saw what it was looking at. Two bodies were lying on the floor, half hidden by the couch. A man and a woman. The couple who lived in the house. They were lying on their sides, facing each other. Their skin was pale, almost grey, and their eyes were open, staring blankly. The smell of death was stronger here, and I could see flies buzzing around the bodies. There was dried blood on the floor around them, a dark stain that had seeped into the carpet. I stood there, unable to move. My mind went blank. 
I couldn't process what I was seeing. The cat walked over to the bodies and lay down next to them, its fur blending with the dark stain on the carpet. It looked up at me, its green eyes calm and unblinking. I felt like I was outside my own body, watching myself from a distance. The room seemed to tilt, and I grabbed the back of a chair to steady myself. I didn't know what to do. My thoughts were jumbled, a mix of confusion and disbelief. How long had they been here? What had happened to them? I took a deep breath and forced myself to think. I needed to call the police, tell someone what I'd found. I fumbled for my phone, my hands shaking. I dialed the emergency number and waited, listening to the ringing in my ear. When the operator answered, I tried to explain what I'd seen, but the words came out in a rush, barely making sense. I managed to give the address before my voice gave out. I stayed in the living room, staring at the bodies while waiting for the police to arrive. I couldn't bring myself to move or even look away. The cat stayed by the couple's side, occasionally licking its fur, which was still matted with blood. It seemed content, almost as if this was normal for it. The house was silent except for the faint buzzing of flies. The minutes dragged on, each one feeling like an hour. My mind kept going over the same questions. How did they die? How long had they been here? Why hadn't anyone noticed? I remembered the last time I'd seen them, maybe a couple of weeks ago, working in their garden. They had seemed like a normal, quiet couple, nothing out of the ordinary. Now here they were, lying dead in their own living room. I tried to distract myself by looking around the room. There were pictures on the walls, framed photographs of the couple at various events, smiling at a beach, posing in front of a Christmas tree, holding hands at what looked like a wedding. A normal life, a normal home. There was nothing in those pictures that suggested anything was wrong. I noticed a calendar on the wall by the doorway. The days were marked off with an X, but the last day marked was over a week ago. It seemed like time had stopped in this house. Everything was as it had been, except for the couple lying dead on the floor. Finally I heard the sound of sirens in the distance. Relief washed over me, knowing that help was on the way. I went to the front door, opened it, and waited on the porch. I could see the police cars approaching, their lights flashing. They pulled up in front of the house, and a couple of officers got out. One of them saw me standing on the porch and came over. Are you the one who called? the officer asked. His voice was calm, professional. I nodded, unable to speak. I felt numb, like I was moving through a dream. The officer led me back into the house while the other officers followed. I pointed to the living room where the bodies were. The officer paused for a moment when he saw them, then spoke into his radio. More police arrived and soon the house was filled with activity. They asked me to wait in the kitchen while they checked the rest of the house. I sat down at the table, staring at the worn wood, my hands still trembling. One of the officers came in and sat across from me. He introduced himself, but I didn't catch his name. I was too focused on the sounds coming from the living room, muffled voices and the rustle of movement. Can you tell me what happened? The officer asked. I took a deep breath and tried to explain. I told him about the cat, how it had been coming to my house with blood on its fur. I explained that I had followed the cat here, found the door unlocked, and discovered the bodies. As I spoke, I felt a strange sense of detachment, like I was recounting something that had happened to someone else. The officer listened without interrupting. When I finished, he nodded and took some notes. Do you know the neighbors well? He asked. I shook my head. No, not really. I've seen them a few times, but we never talked. I didn't even know their names. The officer asked a few more questions, then stood up. We'll need to ask you to stay nearby, in case we have more questions. But you're free to go for now. He handed me his card. If you remember anything else, give me a call. I nodded, still feeling numb. 
I stood up and left the house, walking back to my own. The police stayed behind, continuing their investigation. I glanced back once as I reached my front door. The house behind mine looked the same as it always had, quiet and unassuming, like nothing out of the ordinary had happened. Inside my house felt different, emptier somehow. I sat down on the couch, staring at the walls, trying to process everything. My mind kept going back to the cat, the way it had calmly walked over to the bodies and lain down next to them. How long had it been doing that? Why had it started coming to my house? Was it looking for help? Or was it just acting on instinct? I realized I didn't know much about cats. They were mysterious creatures, independent and aloof. Maybe it didn't mean anything. Maybe it was just a coincidence, but the image of the cat lying next to the bodies, its fur blending with the dark stain on the carpet, wouldn't leave my mind. Over the next few days, I tried to go back to my routine. I wrote during the day, went for my evening walks, and tried not to think about what I'd seen. But it wasn't easy. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw the couple lying there, the flies buzzing around them, the cat's unblinking eyes staring at me. I saw the neighbors sometimes, other people walking their dogs or jogging past. I wondered if they knew what had happened. If they had heard the sirens, seen the police cars, no one mentioned it, and I didn't bring it up. It felt like a dark secret that was hanging over the neighborhood, unspoken but present. One afternoon, I saw the cat again. It was sitting on my porch, just like before, but this time there was no blood on its fur. It looked cleaner, almost well-groomed. It stared at me for a moment, then got up and walked away slipping through the gap in the fence. I watched it go, feeling a strange sense of relief. Maybe things would go back to normal now. Maybe the cat had found a new home, a new routine. Maybe I could put all of this behind me and move on. I wanted to believe that, but a part of me knew it wasn't that simple. There were questions that would never be answered, things that I would never understand. The days passed, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I went through my routines, trying to get back to normal. I wrote during the day, made my meals, and went for my walks. I even started tending to my garden again, pulling out weeds and watering the plants. But the memory of that house, the bodies, and the cat kept creeping into my thoughts. Every time I looked at my porch, I half expected to see the cat sitting there, staring at me with those green eyes. I didn't hear anything from the police. No one came by to ask more questions, and I didn't see any news reports about what had happened. It was like the whole thing had been erased, swept under the rug. I still had the officer's card, and sometimes I thought about calling, asking if they had figured out what happened, but I never did. I didn't really want to know. I wanted to forget. One evening... I was sitting in my backyard enjoying the last bit of daylight. The air was cool and I could hear the faint sound of someone mowing their lawn a few houses down. It was peaceful, the kind of quiet I'd moved here for. I leaned back in my chair, closing my eyes, trying to relax. Then I heard a noise, a soft rustling, like something moving through the grass. I opened my eyes and looked around. There, at the edge of my yard, I saw the cat. It was standing by the fence, watching me. Its fur looked clean, but in the fading light its eyes glowed a dull green. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I stayed still, watching. The cat didn't move. It just stood there, as if waiting for something. I sat up, my heart beating a little faster. What do you want? I muttered, feeling foolish for talking to a cat. But the words slipped out before I could stop them. The cat turned and slipped through the gap in the fence, disappearing into the alley. I stood up, hesitating for a moment before following. I didn't know why I was doing this. Maybe I thought I'd find some kind of answer, something that would help me make sense of everything. I pushed through the gap in the fence and found myself in the alley, looking around for the cat. 
I saw it up ahead, near the gate of the house where I had found the bodies. It slipped through the gate just like before. I followed, feeling a strange sense of déjà vu. The backyard looked the same, overgrown and neglected. The back door was still slightly open. I stood there for a moment, listening. The house was silent. I stepped forward and pushed the door open, feeling the stale air hit my face. Inside everything was as I remembered. The kitchen was cluttered, the hallway dark and quiet. I walked through the house, my footsteps echoing on the wooden floor. I reached the living room and stopped. The bodies were gone. The carpet had been removed, leaving a bare wooden floor with dark stains where the blood had seeped in. The flies were gone and the smell of decay was faint, almost gone. The cat was sitting in the middle of the room, staring at the spot where the bodies had been. It looked up at me as I entered, its eyes unblinking. I felt a strange sense of calm, like I was exactly where I was supposed to be. I stood there, looking at the empty space on the floor, the cat at my feet. What had happened to the couple? The police had come, the bodies had been taken away, but there were no answers, no explanations. It was like they had never existed, just like the cat's strange visits, the blood on its fur. I knew I'd never get any answers, and I wondered if it was better that way. I turned to leave, but something caught my eye. There was a small box on the table by the couch, something I hadn't noticed before. I walked over and picked it up. It was an old wooden box, the kind you might keep jewellery in. I opened it, expecting to find something personal, something that belonged to the couple. But it was empty. I felt a wave of frustration. Why was I even here? What was I hoping to find? I put the box back on the table and turned to leave. The cat was still watching me, its eyes following my every move. I walked back through the house, out the back door, and into the yard. The air felt heavy, like a storm was coming. I closed the door behind me and made my way back to my own house. That night, I tried to sleep, but my mind wouldn't stop. I kept thinking about the house, the cat, the empty box. What did it all mean? Was there a meaning? Or was it just random, a series of events that happened for no reason? I tossed and turned, unable to find any answers. The next day, I woke up feeling exhausted. I made coffee, sat down at my desk and tried to work. But I couldn't focus. My mind kept drifting back to the house, the bodies, the cat. I got up, paced around the room, trying to clear my head. Around noon, I heard a knock at the door. I jumped, my heart racing. I wasn't expecting anyone. I went to the door and opened it slowly. Two police officers were standing on my porch. One of them was the officer who had questioned me that first day. Mr. Anderson, the officer said, we need to ask you a few more questions. I nodded, stepping aside to let them in. My mind was racing, trying to figure out what they wanted. Did they find something? Had I done something wrong? The officers followed me into the living room and sat down. I took a seat across from them, waiting. We've been looking into the case, the officer said. The couple who lived behind you, Mr. and Mrs. Hill, were last seen alive over a week ago, were trying to piece together what happened. You mentioned that you had seen their cat coming to your house. I nodded. Yes, it started showing up a few days before I found them. It had blood on its fur. Do you know where the cat is now? The officer asked. I hesitated. I've seen it around, but it seems to come and go as it pleases. The officer nodded. Cats are like that. We're trying to track down any leads, anything that might help us understand what happened. If you see the cat again, please let us know. It might be important. I nodded, feeling a sense of relief. They weren't accusing me of anything. They were just looking for answers, like I was. The officers asked a few more questions, then thanked me and left. I stood at the window, watching them walk down the path and get into their car. They drove away, and the street was quiet again. 
I went back to my desk, trying to focus on my work. But I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still missing, some piece of the puzzle that I hadn't found yet. I thought about the empty box, the cat, the way it had led me to the house. Was there something I was missing? Some clue that would make sense of everything? The days turned into weeks, and slowly life began to return to normal. The police stopped coming around, and the house behind mine was eventually cleaned out. A for sale sign went up in the yard. I saw people come and go, looking at the property, considering buying it. I wondered if they knew what had happened there, if they could sense the weight of the past that still hung over the place. The cat stopped coming to my house. I hadn't seen it since that last time in the alley. I wondered where it had gone. If it had found a new home or if it was still wandering the neighborhood, looking for something. I tried to move on, to put the whole thing behind me. But some nights, when the house was quiet and I was alone with my thoughts, I would find myself thinking about the couple, the cat, the empty box. I would wonder if there were answers out there, if I had missed something, or if some things were just meant to remain a mystery. In the end, I never found out what happened. The house was sold, new people moved in, and life went on. But today is different. This morning, I heard faint scratching at my front door. I didn't want to open it, but I had to. There, sitting on my front porch, was the cat, its fur matted and covered in blood.